Hi, it's Kirk from Microsoft, and today we're going to talk a little bit around AI, Copilot, Windows 11, and a support. Uh, and to join uh, me in that conversation is Serge from Skycomp, and he's going to give us a little bit more around the reseller insight. So first off, Serge, so AI, what's AI happening for you in the business, for your customers? What are they thinking about? Right now, everybody wants to figure out how they can use AI. Uh, and that's kind of the big question that we're working on as well. So we've been working closely with uh, Microsoft and our other partners, Lenovo, to figure out how we can use it and what practical business um, items we can bring to the table. Right now, we're using it a lot in, in Teams and doing note taking. So there's some exciting, quick features we can start to use. Uh, but AI is such in its infancy right now, we're trying to learn more areas and workflows we can add to it. Love that. And what are the steps for a customer? Because you don't just turn a switch on for AI and suddenly you have AI within your, your environment. Where are you guiding your customers in advance of, of onboarding something like Copilot in M365? Yeah, that's. Potentially onboarding Copilot too quickly is a pretty big security risk. Okay. So right now, we're, my team is trying to figure that out and work with uh, Microsoft and figure out how we apply correct security principles. So right now, we're kind of rolling it out to the executives that have access to all of their documents anyway, so mm -hmm. they can start to get a feel with it and see how it works. Um, but we're trying to figure out how we can push that down to kind of the entire workforce, but not start exposing sensitive data that they might not have access to. So security is a very important concern for us and our clients. Love that. Yeah, and, and we know, Microsoft knows from our studies that over 70% of employees are already using AI. And the question is, is what AI are they using? What data are they using it in, in, in which AI model? So are you using right. it in a public chat GPT model? Are you using it in Copilot and Windows where you've got data protection on? All of that is super critical when you're dealing with you know, IP for your customers and then their own client data or, or intellectual property. Yeah, there's been so many articles about seeing how people have misused it and kind of released uh, private information into the public space. So we're having a lot of discussions with our clients about how that you should be coming up with a, uh, an AI policy okay. to educate their staff. And really we should be considering going to some type of commercial platform sooner than later, because if you don't provide AI to your staff, they're gonna start to use non-sanctioned items. Um, so we're trying to control that and manage that as well. And, and what I like is, is Microsoft has started to address that. So even though you might not have Copilot in M365, we have Copilot in Windows in a commercial edition. So if you've got Azure Active Directory, which we now call Entra, yeah. you've got commercial data protection enabled in there. So you can go in, even on your Windows PC, go to Bing the browser, you're using Copilot there, logged in with your work credentials. We create an instance, you use your IP, your commercial data, whatever it is in there, and then we wipe it away. So we don't look at that, we don't train that, as long as you've got commercial data protection enabled, and that gives customers a lot of peace of mind. Yeah, that, that's really helping kind of, kind of to move that forward and, uh, and keep clients secure. So we're excited about that. Love that. Now devices, what's the other thing around devices? Because yeah. we've got a looming update coming. It sounds like it's far out, right? So October 2025 right. is end of support for, for Windows 10. Um, are you finding customers are getting surprised about, uh, about end of support and the, the status of their, their devices? Well, I would think uh, a few years ago, we caught a little bit offside with the end of support of Windows 7. So we're handling this one um, quite a bit proactively. Love that. So we're already searching all of our clients and any PCs that can't be upgraded to Windows 11 and having those conversations with our clients mm -hmm. early. We're probably already 30 to 40% of that conversion to Windows, uh, Windows 11 ready PCs. Amazing. And we've been having that discussion every quarter with our clients. So it's, we're trying to make it not a surprise this time around. That's great. So you run endpoint analytics and then you're finding a reason why the device will never move to Windows 11. Yes. What's your most common error? Uh, processor. Processor generation. Yeah, processor. Okay. processor or a TPM chip on the, on the device. You, you got it. TPM yeah. 2.0 is a requirement and then we don't go back anything further than Gen 8 Intel. So that's, that's absolutely the yeah. big one. I love that. Uh, and then just to make things more interesting, we introduced a new hardware silicon piece, right? So NPU, neuroprocessing unit. Um, 
A little bit of confusion on NPU, I'd say, in the market right now? Uh, I'd say so. I, I'd say a lot of people don't really understand the processing that goes into AI or how it's done. Uh, it just, you know, for most clients, it happens off in the cloud somewhere and they don't really understand it. So we're, we've been doing a big education piece with clients of what the NPU means okay. and what what the advantages would be for a local AI workload and how that's rated. So we're excited to have some official um, official products coming out and some official marketing and stuff to help us in that discussion with clients. Love that, yeah, and now is a really interesting time because you've got effectively three products in your commercial yeah. stack. You've got a, a Windows 11 Pro device, so great modern PC but no NPU. Still gonna keep selling those, still gonna be you know really supporting those end customers with that one, but then you've got NPU. Now, and so we're starting to see studio effects, which is a functionality in Teams, so we'll clean up background, pull out background noises, right, right? everything, right? So all of that running on locally on the NPU so you don't have latency, uh, you know, a little bit faster, nicer on your battery. And then Microsoft recently launched a new standard of PC, Copilot plus PC. And so the big differentiator there is, is we now have a minimum requirement of that NPU. And we've got this new uh, speed, which is tops, right? Trillions of operations yeah. per second, which again, nobody knew what a gigahertz was or a gigabyte right. was. So this is probably gonna be really common, but our commitment around a Copilot plus PC is where it's 40 plus tops, uh, other specs, 16 gigs of RAM, you know, minimum requirement around the CPU. But that allows Microsoft to, to have this commitment to our ISVs so that they know that that device is, is focused on AI. And we announced at the build conference that we've got seven runtimes that ISVs can go and plug in. And it's probably what you were talking about. Right. The ecosystem is gonna drive to the device. Our ISVs are gonna dictate the use case. So Microsoft has done a great job with our hardware partners like Lenovo to go and make sure that we've got a great device ready for the ISVs and, and the ecosystem to build. And we're, we're very excited about that. So we know that we have the platform and it's kind of that chicken and the egg type of of idea. We know AI is coming, we know more workloads are coming. Yeah. So to have a certification process for a piece of hardware so clients can buy that hardware even if all the workloads aren't there yet, mm -hmm. knowing the software will come. I'd hate to see clients in a situation that they've bought a machine when they could have bought uh, an AI ready PC and now they want to do a workload that they can't and they have to refresh kind of out of band to get that workload. Yeah. So. In terms of Skycom's value add, so, so you're, you're doing endpoint analytics or technical assessments to find those devices. You're giving them the best hardware that you can and suggesting NPU when the role dictates it, supporting the customer on their, their, their data security mm -hmm. journey, right? That's a big yeah. one in consultancy. What else do you add within, within your, your customer offerings that, that brings full value to that, to that whole cycle? Yeah, really our positioning, we're a managed service provider, so Selling hardware and recommending solutions is just kind of a part of what we do. We really see ourselves as an extension of our clients. We see ourselves as our client's IT department. Basically, none of our clients have their own IT department. We end up being their virtual chief information officer yeah. and giving them those business advice at a high end. And then we recommend the solutions. Our clients don't really have anybody that they're vetting at a technical level. Mm -hmm. They're really taking our assurances, which means we have to stay on top of our game with Microsoft, Intel, Lenovo, any of our other partners to really know and advise from a business level to our clients. I love that. And you mentioned a couple of different vendors, so you're gonna get them there, but it's that last mile. Right. That you're gonna integrate and tie everything together and, and make it simple. Exactly, generally we're providing a solution to our clients rather than a list of items. We have to make it work from the hardware all the way to the software stack and configuration and onboarding their staff, so it's, it's a pretty important role we play. I love it. So, Serge, thank you so much for your business. Thank you for excellent execution, uh, and uh, you know, looking forward to a great future with Skycom. And Kirk, thank you so much for Microsoft's partnership. We're we're excited to be a, a partner with Microsoft and be able to have a chance to do events like this. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs>